let's ask him like why. Because a lot of people use Packer, some people use Shader. David, what do you, how do you, you've tried the Packer as well, right? Yeah, the Packer's good, but uh, I like it for packing black, but I do so many layers. You do, I yeah. have to have a softer hand and have to be able to go over the skin more. Have that and forgiveness? This yeah. That's cool. That's what's perfect with the shader because you got that soccer hitting motor, huh? Yeah, you could you could you could layer your your shading without really damaging the skin. The packer is, is just is really matter of fact. Yes. It just puts it in there, right? Zooming in there. What are you running your wattage at? What's your volts right now? Right it's now? eight point six. I run it at eight point five to nine volts. Okay. But this one is it's a softer. Um, it's a child portrait, so I'll go a little bit, a little bit lighter on it. Let's take a quick that's, look at this. Let's not, take a quick yeah, look at it's this. Not believable. So we're getting in there. We've got beautiful daughter, little Vivi here, capturing a moment in time. Yeah, you can use the packer for pretty much as bold as you want to go. Um, we do sell a stainless steel grip that is mind blowing. Um, if you're looking for bold, bold lines, I would definitely suggest getting the stainless steel grip. Uh, the commentary we've been hearing is it's almost like a different machine because it makes the machine heavier. And so what that does is it makes the needles go into the skin more like butter, right? Because people don't realize this, but a machine tends to bounce off a little bit, bounce off the skin a little bit, minutely. That's kind of the whole draw with people aligning with coils. It's... In reality, it's not so much the hit of a coil, mm -hmm. it's the fact that it weighs nine ounces, right? If you ever feel the hit of a coil, like if someone says, I have a nice coil that I use for lining, it has a bunch of give on it, right? So it's it's the weight of the machine that's really doing all the, all the pushing. So yeah, I suggest if you're looking for some fat lines, you can use a packer, but throw on that stainless steel grip, and you're gonna be so happy. <laughs> Mr. David, what is your drop system over here? Hey, we'll wait, let's I, pull out here and let's take a look here. Pull out, don't get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, drop system. I just use a gray wash set from Empire. So how, when you get these set up though, how, which, uh, as far as your drops here, is it just uh, light, medium, dark, or is there... So that's just solid black, dark, medium, light, extra light. Now put out an extra light and a light in case I need to... Uh, mix between the two. Okay. Really nice. It feels pretty accurate to uh, to the fresh part, fresh okay. uh, tattoo. Well, the proof is in the pudding. We've all seen your tattoos for a long time, and yeah, you've. I think you've probably made a lot of people quit tattooing. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to, but then I have too many bills. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So as we're getting zoomed in on there in the needles, which needle are you using, brother? Uh, right now, it's uh, the Da Vinci 13 Curve mag those are your go-to's uh 13 and 7. let's talk about that technique you're doing so you're like a cross hatcher yeah we got people asking about that yeah let's zoom in let's zoom in really really good let's get up over here and, uh, damn it's looking so good man so that's a, a cross hatch uh real subtle cross hatch i'm not kind of like creating tees they're just real subtle changing the hands okay. and, um, you, and i just build the tone slowly okay and you definitely believe in going like making the plus sign and the, the asterisk sign is that how you achieve the smoothness sure. yeah i just keep uh the more you cross hatch the the smoother it starts to get as long as you're not cross hatching in the same exact direction the entire time okay let's wa let's watch them do some let's cross get up in there for everybody all right you guys this is a treat you guys are in class right now we zo we're zooming in so you can actually see his technique um but you guys can't tell anybody because this is you know worth at least a couple hundred grand. <laughs> Michael Bruno 393 is really loving his shader wand. We appreciate the support, my brother. Yeah, that's what that's, they want to see that right there. Yeah. Hope everything's well, Dervon. Sending you love out there to New York, my man. Uh, so these uh, disposable grips, they're asking, or are they auto Can you autoclave the disposable grips? No, no, no. they'll melt. Those are thrown away. Rocky G Zings, how you doing, my man? Thanks for checking in. We got Clearwater, Houston, Arizona, Dallas, Sacramento, Los Angeles, Brazil, Jersey City, Chino, Costa Rica, 
Greetings from Compton. Mazer, how you doing, my man? Compton, California. Uh, hey. Vancouver, Brazil. Corey Allen, David is the man. Do you guys have any questions for David Vega? Um, he'll answer anything except for personal questions, unless it's <laughs> his favorite food. <laughs> <laughs> hey, David, what is your favorite food? Everything. Pe people always ask, like, tattoo questions when they have, like, a favorite artist, but I, I bet you people want to know what you uh, eat. I like a good steak. Okay, okay. Are like Nusseret? <laughs> <laughs> we all remember that one. Austin's probably got some good restaurants, I imagine. Yeah, we got a, a good amount of good restaurants. Uh, what's your favorite color? Favorite color? Black and gray? Black and gray, <laughs> yeah. Actually, here's a great question for you both uh, from Nazareth Martinez. Could you explain the relationship between hand speed and machine power to create the smooth shading without overworking the skin? Oh. Hand speed, okay, that, we call that the XYZ. Hand speed, it, David's, David's... I, you, yeah, I got one. I think there's one thing that's kind of simple that people don't realize if you consistently uh, lubricate the skin a lot or just forget to do it every time um, <clears throat> you'll uh, reduce a lot of that redness yeah yeah keep keep it moisturized <clears throat> but there is try not to dry wipe too much no, no no and there really is a connection between the right hand speed and the right voltage because to get that smooth shading you have to have a rhythm and uh, as I watched David tattoo he has like a per I would call it like a perfect rhythm where it's you can't have your voltage too up, too too high, and have slow hand speed. That's too many punctures per minute. You can't have it too low and have, you know, low hand speed either because then it's too little. Um, I think the right amount of ink also. If you don't put enough ink, you try to go too soft and you just create too much trauma to try to build that tone up. Yeah. I always say try experimenting with different volts, um, like, you know, Point two increments at a time with a certain hand speed and find out what works for you do a lot of testing and then once you get that per that perfect stroke and that perfect laying down of the ink then just start memorizing that like like I could confidently ask David like what he tattoos at and it probably never wavers like what, what's your normal voltage range nine okay yeah. and uh, yeah easy nine I won't change the, the voltage, I'll just change my hand speed. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's an important thing, what he just said right now, like, changing, keeping the voltage, keeping your machine doing doing its thing consistently, you can change your hand speed and direction and subconsciously you know, me memorize what that change in hand speed does. And it's just, I think it takes the thinking out of it a little bit more, right? Mm hmm Ooh, we got our sister Gianni checking in out there from Brazil. But How I you do. doing, sister? Hope all is well. She's coming down here with her parents pretty Ooh, soon. Ooh, awesome. Look forward to having you out here. Sending all our love out there to Brazil. Uh, let's see. VXO39, I can't believe he's actually letting you film. Feels like I found gold. You did? <laughs> you know what? To, it, whoever said that is a wise man because this this is gold to be able to watch David tattoo and ask him questions like look at that guys that's a, that's called methodical tattooing right there that's why he's his tattoos look the way they do absolutely uh, what's your longest tattoo session you've ever had David I did um, almost 16 hours on um, my uh, business partner's uh, ribs oh wow yeah, you got a statue oh man Finished it? Start to finish? No, we actually did another session of maybe four hours. I always talk about this with David. Um, how important is patience to becoming a good tattoo artist? Oh, because extremely. ultimately you're, a, you're a, a very patient tattoo artist. Yeah, it's extremely uh, important. I think it's hard to kind of keep that pace from beginning to end. Like, you know, when you first start tattooing the first two, three, four hours, you know, you're kind of in your zone and you feel good by your sixth, seventh, eight hour, your body's fatigued and clients tired and skin's irritated. So it's hard to kind of maintain that patience throughout. How do you do it? Like what, what, what could you share with the audience on, on your uh, Honestly, there's no trick. Um, I just kind of just take my time and I don't 
really look at the rest of the tattoo or what I have left to do. I just kind of concentrate on what's in front of me, what I'm tattooing. Um, and then eventually it's going to get done. Yeah, I find that too. Like when, when I'm doing like a portrait or something, I'll, I'll have my moments where I'll, I'll, I'll look around and I'm like, shit, I still have the hair, the left side of the face yeah. to do. I got to finish this and that. Yeah. We have, my clients would do that. Like they'll see me tattooing and they're like, oh man, I thought we had way more done. I was like, man, it's like... Yeah. Let's see here from Iconic Tattoo Studio. How does David handle skin that raises up really fast after the needle makes the puncture? Uh, so what I do is I kind of, if the skin starts to welt up really bad, I'll work on one big area. I'll kind of just block out a big area so there's no welt marks, and then I'll work within that area because if I start working in smaller areas, it welts up and then it becomes creates uh, like a speed bump and then you'll get gaps between your your, yeah, uh, yeah, your yeah. shades that's when that happens it's, that's it's not you fun. have to kind of wait no. yeah to you just get to wait it out and uh urban da vinci's got a question what lube do you use for the skin you're using purple glide right yep i use uh, purple glide and cbd there you go guys inkies cbd and purple glide but today we only have the purple glide out he is using, as far as the maggots, the 13, right? The 13 yes, curved? the 13 curved mag. 10, 10, 13. Bug pin 13? I, yep. Okay. He's a bug pin kind of guy. 1013 CM, to be exact. Uh, let's see, this is actually a good question for you guys. How do you do your stencil, and do you super saturate the picture before you stencil it out? Super saturated. Like, do you uh, do you do any adjustments? To, so here's the reference. Yeah, sometimes I will. Um, I can show them the stencil too. Just kind of break it down in shapes. I don't focus on any particular uh, parts of the body, like the lips or anything. Just everything's broken down into almost simple shapes. What do you guys both see as common mistakes that artists make when they're tattooing portraits of babies or children? What are some of the things that you see? I think you guys are talking about, I mean, using the hair as a portrait as itself and being able, people always rushing through the, the hair. They maybe focus on the face. Like what are, what are some of the things that you see are common mistakes? Uh, you know, uh, try to tattoo every detail they see. Sometimes you gotta simplify it. Um, you have to do with yeah, kid portraits. You have to simplify a lot. Let's of take it. a look at this real quick. And that's and that's an important rule because that's even in the fine art world. Like if you look at any painting, like even by Caravaggio, it's um, up close. It's just the right brush strokes, but from far away, it looks realistic because they've simplified it. Yeah. Ice Slaughter's asking, how do you keep the ink from splattering once the needle hits the skin? Ooh, that's a good question. I've never really had that problem, but you can kind of uh, just kind of pop the... Quick dips? Uh, yeah. Some of the excess ink, or you can kind of just stab it. Yeah, I, th I think that's really the cause of it, is people suck up too much ink. Mm. I mean, on one hand, you have to dip a little bit more often, but especially the way David tattoos where, you know, he's cross-hatching, so you, you can't really have a bunch of ink bubble up on the skin. Pokey McNeedles has a question for David. Dude, I like that name. That's a great name. Great name, my friend. Uh, is the face all the same tone, or do you build up, or do you transition from your tones? What? I'll build up. Um, there's a lot of the same tones, especially with kid portraits, but I'll build up tones, and I'll even go back later and darken stuff if I need to. Yes, we will get in there in the eyes and get all up in there for you guys at home here. Let's get in there. Sorry, we're getting super zoomed in so we can get that for you guys there. Uh, we got somebody asking about that. Uh, is that an engraved Rolex on your hand, Franco? You know what? Yeah, but it's fake. It's a fake one. It's a fake Rolex, but the let's get up in there in the eyes. This is like that classic song you hear when you get off the airplane at a at an island. Right. <laughs> Ninety six degrees in the shade. 
What's the stencil product that you use mostly, David? Uh, just stencil stuff. No, no. What do you guys... Actually, this is a great question for both of you. What do you guys do when you have the client who bleeds a lot? You kick them out. Tell them to come <laughs> back another day. Don't drink too much the night before. No. <laughs> uh, honestly, um, we just kill them and then they stop bleeding. And then we bring them back to life when we're done. <laughs> you ever tried that technique, David? Never tried that. Yeah. yeah. It's, Try it's, it next it's not for everybody, but... <clears throat> It only sucks when, like, they can't get resuscitated. <laughs> What's so going on, CB up. Sacred Oath? How you doing, my man? Hope all is well. Sending nothing but the best to you. I still, I owe my honest answer, though. But the real thing is when they bleed a lot, I'll use, um, like, a... Well, actually, I, that's what I like about the CBD glide. It kind of helps with that and the redness. Kind of brings it down, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And then just kind of... Wait, it's like a waiting game. The tattoo session goes from three hours to six hours. <laughs> uh, David, is there an amount of time that you like to limit your breaks while you're tattooing? Yeah, no longer than like 10, 20 minutes. Unless it's like a lunch break. We got a question from Mr. J Create. Joseph, great question here. Does David, do you ever notice a difference in skin irritation when using the hemp glide versus the, or the hemp ointment over the purple ointment or any other ointments? Do you notice any uh, redness or inflammation reduction? No, but I'll use it if I am getting a good amount of redness or swelling. It helps. So people can use that as aftercare, right, Franco? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We got somebody asking if they can take another look at the stencil, if you have a second. Yeah. They want to just see how you map it out. Let's see here. Let's get in there for you guys. <laughs> There's his road map, and this is where we currently are at the moment. Let's take a quick look in here. Mm -hmm. Again, David, thank you for your patience, my brother. Are you doing like most of that with like, the, the, 80, the 803? Or the mag, the... the uh, most of it is with the 7. Okay, cool. But uh, that Pipe joint style. Yeah, because if I do it with the liner too much, it becomes too, too sharp. Yeah, yeah I, I, I definitely agree with that. I Frank. think that's a mistake a lot of people make, actually, thinking that they have to do everything with a 3 tight or a single needle. Mm -hmm. David, how do you make the stencil last so long, even though your hand's resting on the tattoo? Question from Julie V. Uh, I don't know. It just does. <laughs> and it just works. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta put it on properly. You gotta put it on. You have to make sure you alcohol the skin to take away all the oil. Because that's what that's yeah, one of the things that makes it, like, fall off. So wipe the skin off really good with alcohol. And then when you put the stencil on, you gotta press a napkin on it a little bit. Maybe once off, or twice. Yeah. Okay. Get as much oil off as you can. Yeah. And then if, if it's a technical tattoo like this... Honestly, I would let them dry. I would let them walk around for 15, 20 minutes before you start. And I'm not really putting my hand all the way on the stencil. I'm kind of like cupping the... Yeah, yeah, So I won't grab too much of it. Yep. Yep. So it, it might look like he's, you know, putting heavy hands on the stencil, but he's... I can even feel he's going around it. So when you were in the eye, were you just using uh, just the round liner, or were you actually getting in there with the curved mag as well up no, there? No, I used the liner for... Some of the eyelashes and um, and some of the blacks, but for the most part, it's all a set of mag. When changing from soft to dark wash, do you use a rinse cup? Do you clear out the dark wash, or do you just carry it over? Uh, I just just kind of empty the ink in here. Okay. Paper towel. 